Good afternoon, I'm Raylene Ramsey. This is your afternoon news fix for Thursday, the 1st of August. Government agencies are being urged to get on with changes to child protections. A review in 2022 of the Tauranga five-year-old Malakai Subesh was murdered, recommended sweeping changes. The Independent Children's Monitor says they haven't happened. And Tamariki are no safer today than when Malakai died. Chief Executive Aaron Jones says agencies tell him work's underway, but decisions haven't been made or improvements. While I can understand that to a point, these are issues that have been known for some time. You know, we've known about this for decades, and that's why we want to see priority given and actually things getting done. Parliamentarians have been ordered into silence over concerns the Children's Minister is being bullied. Karen Shaw has told 3 News she feels policy debates turned into personal attack and Parliament is not a safe work environment. I'm still a person and I feel like I'm getting that stripped away from me day by day in this place. I've had enough. During today's Question Time, Speaker Jerry Brownlee ruled MPs will hear questions and answers from Chaw in silence. It's not a permanent thing. It's for now because I think there does need to be a slight cultural reset in the place. A report from the contractor at the centre of a widespread power outage in Northland is expected to provide more answers. Power was cut off to nearly 100,000 people when a pylon toppled after maintenance crews unbolted three legs at once. Transpar's investigation found the Omexum team leader was distracted sandblasting and inexperienced workers removed the bolts unsupervised. Grid delivery manager Mark Ryle says they've had a 30-year relationship with a Mexum and a full audit shows there's no systematic failure. Something's gone horribly wrong on this job and we need to find out the the full reasons and then work with a Mexum to to fix any issues. A Mexum will complete its investigation this month. WorkSafe's opened an investigation into safety procedures at a Christchurch ice rink after a student died on a school trip. The 13-year-old was injured at Alpine Ice on Tuesday. Jamie Cunningham reports. Hyatt Community Campus and a family member confirmed her death on social media this morning. A WorkSafe spokesperson says its investigation will consider the circumstances and what policies the business had in place for risk management. It says students should be able to participate safely and family must have confidence their children will be kept safe. Searches have led to four more arrests over a violent brawl in Hawke's Bay's Wairoa after a rugby game at the weekend. Several people were injured. All eight now arrested are gang members. Calls to not carry food into movies after two women were trespassed from a Pukekohe theatre yesterday. Staff at the cinema in Auckland South say the pair were asked to remove the hot food, snacks and beverages they'd brought in or leave. Police were called. Darkerville's Anzac Theatre manager Vernon Woods says they ban outside food because it's where they make their money. They need to remember that if they want the cinema to still be there and survive, I don't think anyone's getting rich in the cinema industry these days. To sport. And Kiwi triathlete Hayden Wilde is already plotting his path to gold at the 2028 Los Angeles Olympics after picking up silver in Paris. Twelve members of the All Blacks Rugby Championship squad, including former captain Sam Kane, will return to their provincial teams to play NPC pre-season matches over the next two days. After considering applications for the role, Netball New Zealand has reappointed Debbie Fuller as Silver Fern's assistant coach, a position she's held since 2018. I'm Raylene Ramsey. That is your latest news fix. We'll be back with the next update tomorrow morning from the News Talk ZB newsroom.